Welcome to Raychem's series of training videos from the Electrical Products Division. This tape will show a laboratory installation of an HVSY 1520S series heat shrinkable Y splice for 15 kV extruded dielectric power cables. All Raychem Y splice kits may be used for submersible or direct burial applications and have been tested to meet the performance requirements of IEEE 404. Provide a positive environmental seal by utilizing redundant sealing mechanisms. Provide pre-engineered insulation thickness to help ensure consistent performance and repeatable installations while minimizing installation errors. Raychem also offers the HVSY 1580D Y splice kits for 15 kV pilk to poly or pilk to pilk applications. After we've installed the HVSY 1522S poly Y splice, We'll go back to show you the few extra steps needed to install the HVSY 1580D splice, which utilizes Raychem's patented oil stop system. Complete written instructions are included with each splice kit. Be sure to read and follow these instructions carefully before installing your splice. To make the splice, you'll need the proper cable preparation tools and a clean burning propane gas torch. The recommended torches are Raychem's FH2616A1 or the FH2629 self-igniting torch, which is what we'll be using today. Before you start, always check all connections for leaks before igniting the torch. In addition, always provide good ventilation of confined workspaces and make sure you're following the safety instructions established by your own organization. The laboratory demonstration that follows is not intended to represent field installation conditions or your specific safety procedures. In this program, we'll be splicing a 15 kV single conductor extruded dielectric copper tape shielded main cable to a 15 kV single conductor wire shield tap cable using an HVSY 1522S kit. To begin the installation, Verify your kit selection and prepare the cables as outlined in the written instructions supplied in the kit. Here we've prepped metallic tape shield and wire shield and we'll first abrade and clean the cables. After prepping the cable, you'll need to start by applying SRM at the semicon cutbacks of all three cables, tapering it down to meet the insulation. The next step is to install the black stress control tubes. Begin by placing a black stress control tube over each cable at one quarter inch from the insulation cutback. Shrink starting at the conductor end first and work towards the other end of the tube. After installing the stress control tubes, position the short red shim tube on the single cable side of the splice at one quarter inch from the end of the stress control tube and shrink into place. Clean the main cable jacket as shown using an approved solvent like Raychem's P63 prep kit. Nest the red insulating tube within the black red dual layer tube and slide them over the single cable side of the splice. Keep in mind that these tubes should be kept clean during the installation of the connector. At this point you'll install the connector. The kind of connector used is dependent upon the cable type. You have two choices. For connections on polymeric cable with copper conductor, you can use a Burndy YSH crimp connector or a soldered half duplex connector. For connections on polymeric cable with aluminum conductors or for paper lead connections, you'll need to use a soldered half duplex connector. Now it's time to install the stress relief mastic or SRM. After thoroughly cleaning all splice surfaces, cut a long strip of SRM into several one and a half inch pieces. Remove the backing strips and roll them up tightly. You'll need to pack these rolled up pieces of SRM between the two conductors on the tap side of the splice, making sure that all air gaps between the ends of the insulation and connector are completely filled with SRM. Next, remove the indicated backing strip from one side of a strip of SRM and roll into a workable size. Removing the remaining backing strip, stretch and tightly wrap the SRM around the connector and exposed conductor. Continue to wrap the SRM onto the insulation and installed tubes, building up a smooth profile as shown here. 
Notice how we've filled in the gaps and low spots around the connector. To install the red insulating crotch profile or ICP, remove the backing paper from the ICP and position it between the run and tap cable with the sealant side in. A thin layer of silicon grease may be used to make this easier, but be careful not to over apply. Push the ICP up against the installed SRM and then make sure your tap cable is laying parallel to the run cable and is up flat against the ICP. At this point, if one or both of the tap side cables are metallic tape shield, you'll need to connect the ground braid. Lay the ground braid across the shield with approximately 4 inches extending toward the center of the splice. Next, attach the braid to the shield by placing two wraps of the spring clamp over the braid. Fold the long part of the braid back over the spring clamp and continue to wrap the remaining clamp over the braid. Tighten the clamp and secure it with copper foil tape. To complete the tap side ground where the tap cable is wire shield, simply twist the drain wires to form a pigtail and connect the pigtail to the shorter length of the ground braid using a compression connector. Make sure you trim the excess braid and drain wires. Consult the installation instructions for completing the ground on the tap side with lead sheath or metallic tape taps. After binding the tap and run cables together using a cable tie, you're ready to shrink the nested tubes one at a time. Center the red insulating tube between the jacket cutbacks and begin shrinking at the center of the tube working the torch with a smooth brushing motion around all sides of the tube to avoid scorching. When the center has shrunk, work the torch as before toward the tap end of the tube and apply enough heat to shrink the tube and soften the insulating crotch profile. The ICP is designed to melt and fill the gaps between the main and tap cables. You'll know that sufficient heat has been applied when the ICP shoulders have rounded off and have started to melt. When the tap end has shrunk and the ICP has started to melt, work the torch as before toward the opposite end. Apply enough heat to shrink the tube and smooth the underlying profile of the ICP and SRM over the connector. While the insulating tube is still hot, Center the black and red dual layer tube over the red tube and shrink it into place starting at the center and working towards one end at a time as described previously.